Hi Storm fans, I'm delighted to bring you an exclusive interview with our latest signing, Sam Tremblay. Sam, welcome to Manchester. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. So Sam, um, I'll just tell everybody uh, a little bit about yourself. So you're a 28-year-old forward from Quebec uh, and you came through the Canadian junior system. You played in the U Sports League uh, with McGill University and you just had your first pro year in the ECHL with the Wheeling Nailers. Uh, scoring 29 points in 63 games. So, um, Sam, tell us, when did you start playing hockey? Um, I started, I was four years old, actually. Um, and, uh, yeah, my dad got me into hockey slowly. And uh, I guess I never stopped from there. Yeah, I, I love hockey since, um, since I was super young. So, were you always a forward? Did you try the other positions first? How, how did that go? I think I think I was always a forward. Yeah, um, I always had too much energy, <laughs> so it uh, put me on forward. So um, I think I wanted to be a goalie when I was young, um, and then eventually my dad just gave me like the decision to be either a goalie or or a forward. But I've always played forward, so I guess I I uh, I just stayed forward. And obviously, looking at uh, your career today, you kind of came through the junior system. At what point did you think about turning pro? Was that something you always wanted to do? Yeah, yeah. Um, but after my junior career, um, I think I was still a bit immature physically. Um, so I didn't, and also like I knew uh, my my chance of being drafted in the NHL and this and that were were uh, close to none. Um, so I wanted my education to be done first. Um, and then obviously um, I wanted to stay close from home and McGill was um, it's, it's, it's an easy choice. Uh, it was very an easy choice. It's a, a great school. Um, also not just for hockey, but also just for the cool school itself. Um, so for me, it was a very easy decision and my dad kind of gave me some options, but it was, it was, it was the smartest choice and it was actually um, I did my undergrad uh, in kinesiology at McGill, and then I uh, wanted to stay two more years to finish my master's. Um, so I did biomechanics. And now after I wanted to go play pro hockey because I still felt like I had many more years of hockey in me. And uh, yeah, I just want to compete and play hockey. But first, I wanted to kind of secure my school. Um, so then after my career, I could still rely on that and while still playing hockey, I could still build um, what I want to do for after. And you've mentioned that a couple of times. Was he your biggest influence in becoming a hockey player? Yeah, my dad. Yeah. Um, I think I was looking up to some players in the NHL here and there. But um, yeah, my dad was always like, uh, he was always kind of my best friend. Um, he was always with me at hockey tournaments and, and stuff. And uh he gave me he gave me like the education I needed and the push I needed to to perform. Um, and he was just very supportive of whatever I was doing. So um, he was he was just offering me options when I was young uh, to to either play here or there. But it was always my decision um, and he was always there with me. So, yeah, he he taught me a lot as a person, but also as a hockey player and how to, uh, to know myself on the ice and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So obviously your college hockey career was affected by COVID uh, when you guys had to take a year off. We also had uh, another year. Um, so I know it was a two-year gap, essentially, in your CV before you turned pro. So what happened there? Yeah, I think everybody is kind of um, curious about that because obviously it doesn't look that great. Um, but yeah, so my my first year out of those two was obviously because of COVID. Um, so it was tough. We couldn't, we couldn't play hockey at all. We were just, especially the Canadian uh, University, Hockey um, league was shut down all around in Canada. Um, and then the second year, it slowly started back. Um, so I, I, I trained for th that full year we were off. I trained all um, off season, I guess, or the whole uh, the whole season we couldn't play. I was training, uh, I was trailing it hard. But when I came, um, so the second season that I didn't play um, in preseason, the last game of preseason, um, I got hit weird by the board and my, my shoulder came out um, and I tried to make a comeback because it was my last year um, that I could play at McGill. So I tried to make a comeback and my shoulder eventually came out three more times. Um, so I just decided 
because I wanted at the uh, next season to play hockey, to play still hockey, pro hockey. Um, so I decided to just um, scrap that that my last season in uh, in youth sports um, in order to get a surgery so I could get ready because it's a six months recovery. It's a it's a grueling and long recovery. So um, I took the decision to get a surgery, and it was really. I had to I had to take that decision pretty early um, because or or health system was was obviously uh, filled up with COVID patients and this and that so all the surgeries were backed up um, so I just had to take that decision pretty early so it was a little bit of a dagger but in the long run I think it was it was worth it because it's uh, obviously playing my pro my first pro hockey season uh, this year was tough on the body. Um, so there's no way I could have done it with like a bad shoulder. So right now everything's good. That that season prepared me. <laughs> prepared yeah, obviously my... you, you, you had like a point every other game. So obviously you, you, you did okay in the ECHL. I mean, speaking of which, like, was it harder to to get a contract with a team given that you'd had essentially two years off, especially as a, a first year pro? Um, it was uh, an interesting time because obviously my during. Before before COVID happened, before that season that we didn't play, we were I think close to preseason, um, if I can recall, or or was it the year before? Anyway, so I did um, the year before and my just before I tore my shoulder, um, I played in the All Star team for uh, Team Quebec against the Montreal Canadiens uh, rookies. So it's part of like, it's, it's just has been done two years now. So I think they're going to keep that uh, program going just to showcase a little bit the youth sports ta talent. Um, but yeah, so I did the, the, those two, uh, those two games and I did very well. So I knew like I showcased myself and it was just a matter of it, it, unfortunate events. So my, obviously it, it looks bad on my elite prospect, but for people who knew me um, or who knows me, they, um, they know what I'm about and they know that I can play. And, um, but obviously like I had some good connections, um, especially through McGill. Um, and so, uh, I was able to, to secure a contract and my coach, uh, in Wheeling was, was really good to me. He, he believed in me and obviously I had, um, you know, I did my time at McGill and I showed that I was able to play at a higher level. So, um, and, uh, I did my work in the off season. Um, so it was a long two years. I'm not gonna lie. It was uh, it was a tough and long two years, um, especially mentally. But I was ready to come back. And um, the earlier and that my points don't really represent how I played um, this season because um, I think I had like three points in the first 25 games um, in Wheeling. But I was play, re playing really good hockey. It was just a weird time for me to get back into uh, game shape because I was mm -hmm. really good physical shape but it's it's there's a little bit of a transition between the gym and practice to actual games um so just get back to, to, to that game form and um a little bit get accustomed to, to pro hockey um but then after that around christmas i turned my season around um you know i was averaging 22 minutes uh time on ice uh per game so it's still it's a lot of minutes for a forward um so then eventually i just picked up momentum and um i was i was close to a point per game by the end of the season just in that time span um and then I, we didn't we didn't make playoffs and everything so uh, it was a little bit unfortunate because i was having uh, my my season just kept getting better and better so um it was really exciting hockey by the end of the season but we didn't have a, a very offensive team and we were limited uh a little bit everywhere so um yeah, it was um, it was a good first year of pro hockey. I learned a ton, um, so I think that prepared me well for uh, my next step with the Storm. Yeah. So speaking of your next move, obviously you're joining us in Manchester. So what led to you wanting to come over to the UK? Um, I was looking at some um, at some leagues in the, in Europe. Um, I've always had my mind on Europe for my later uh, stage in my hockey career. Um, so I think for my first year coming back after two years, I knew it was going to be really, really hard to go to Europe right away. Um, so I wanted to build back a little bit my hockey resume. So that's why I went to uh, the East coast. Um, obviously I wanted to uh, play better at the beginning to kind of boost it a little bit even more, but 
you know, that's what it is. Um, and then looking to Europe, you know, there was certain leagues that I was uh, having my eyes on, but um, I was considering maybe coming back to the, to the East coast. Um, but that, that season was really hard on the body, obviously in, in the East coast, it's 72 games. Um, so it's, it's grueling on the body. And, and after two years off, uh, my body was kind of beat up by the end. Um, even though like I was still very energetic in this and that, but, um, yeah, it's just a long season, a lot of road trips. It's, it's, it's called the jungle for a reason. Um, so, uh, and I've heard a lot of good things about, about England. Um, got a few friends that played the, uh, in different places in the UK. So I knew that that league is um, is blooming right now. There's a lot of good players that are coming in and also out to a better league as well. So it's um, and uh, yeah, I know. I just know it's it's a great place to play. And Manchester, obviously, just the city itself is uh, is uh, pretty cool. Everybody knows Manchester. So yeah. Um, and yeah, I it was just a great fit for for me and my girlfriend. We're really excited to come over. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I I don't think I would have gone anywhere else to be honest. And speaking of your your move to Manchester, how exactly has that come about? Were you reached out to, or was it agents? Like how how exactly did you get in touch with us? Uh, it's actually my agents. So I knew a few people in Quebec um, that put me in contact with uh, Chris Bailey, actually, uh, who works uh, for the Storm. Um, so he put some good words uh, about the team and. Uh, you know, just just uh, looking at teams and 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 cities that uh, that are in in the in the UK league, uh, Manchester was my top three. So um, it was already like as soon as I I knew there was a little bit of interest, I I I said yes right away. So uh, for me, it was a really easy decision. Um, so yeah, it was pretty easy. And now that you, you you're coming over, how would you describe yourself as a player? Um, I'm a, I'm a very energetic player. I think, uh, from the amount of hit to my attempt to hit to my head and stuff like that in the East coast, a player really hate to play against me. Um, so I think I'm a very annoying, to, annoying player to play against. Um, I'm, I'm very solid on PK and face off. So I, it's a big part of my game, um, that can change a lot of momentum. Um, also, I I am I have a great shot, so I I like to shoot, um and um yeah I'm I'm just a very annoying player to play against. I would for for people that like to look at the NHL, I would uh, a little bit compare myself to Philip Deneau. So he was a Montreal Canadiens before, so I looked up to him a lot. Um, now he's playing for the Kings, and um, yeah. So my my offensive game is coming along, and uh, yeah, I take I take good pride in my game. And um, as you say, you you all can cover a lot of areas. But have you spoken to uh, head coach Matt Ginn at all about the kind of role that you're going to play in the team? Yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, we spoke a little bit, and I think uh, I'm going to be all a bit everywhere. Um, I think it was a good fit for for him and I. He likes my game, um, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm I think on the obviously I think on the on the on the penalty kill it will be. Uh, uh, I'll, I think I could be a great addition to the team. Uh, but also on the power play, um, since I'm um, very energetic and um, I'm, I'm a fast player, so uh, recovering some pucks and getting in front of the net and stuff like that. Um, and even being in a shooter position, uh, I won't mind shooting that puck. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, Sam, just before we wrap up, is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Yeah, I mean, I'm super excited uh, to come over. It's going to be my first time in England, uh, so I hope I can get a warm welcome, but uh, no, I can't wait to to meet everybody. Um, I like to be close to people. Um, so I've been I've been in small uh, teams usually. So uh, I like to talk to fans and stuff like that. Get close to to the 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 fans who support the team a lot. And uh, yeah, no, I'm just super excited. I can't wait for September um, and get the season rolling. Excellent. Well, Sam, thanks for joining me today, and uh, I will see you in September. Thank you. Can't wait to meet you.